My colleague and I are demonstrating a well-known memory reconsolidation technique. This one's often called the rewind technique and we'll be doing my variation on it. It's helpful to understand how reconsolidation techniques like this fit with trauma healing as a whole. They're designed to reduce symptoms and they open the door for deeper healing. They don't directly heal anything. Uh, you'll restructure the way you represent an overwhelming or wounding event in a way that ends or softens your internal reenactments. Your fight or flight response gets dec decoupled from the event itself. Uh, these techniques will break the oscillating patterns that often are keeping your natural memory and emotional processing from doing what it was designed to do. That said, just doing the reconsolidation technique without some care to test your results can leave a lot to chance. And that's not always ideal. Uh, even though the symptoms that bothered you uh, sometimes will evaporate or at least get reduced, your system is designed to become dynamically resilient so that you can have the kind of post-traumatic growth that leads you to be more confident, more emotionally flexible when it comes to meeting life's challenges. In this demonstration, we took a real life overwhelming experience that my colleague had had recently. We did a run of the technique and checked into her general distress level towards it. After that, uh, when we weren't clear on whether the distress was reduced, substantially. We didn't leave things to chance. We departed from the content. We did some work on re-regulating her activated response. There are a lot of different ways we could have proceeded, and this one was just based on my experience of uh, what has often helped people. So we talked a little bit about how this rewind technique works. And so um, when it comes to that event, uh, there's there was one point in time right before anything bad started happening right before anything scary started happening yeah and then there was another point in time when you knew you were safe maybe you didn't feel so great but you knew you were safe yeah right and so um can you think to can you establish in your mind where it was in time when nothing bad had happened yet you don't yeah. have to tell me about it but you can just Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, like you can think of it. it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, you got ideas, you got thoughts, you got images. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Can you think about a time uh, right afterwards when you knew you were safe, even if you didn't feel so great? Yeah. Okay, so those will be our two points of safety. Okay. okay. So next, we're going to do a three part dissociation. We're going to do this by first pretending that you are at the first point of safety, but not as you, as an actress who's playing you who's going to be, be in a movie. Is that cool? Okay, yeah. Okay, so you're an actress just in the scene and just waiting at the first point of safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, second layer of dissociation. Uh, now let's imagine that you are pulling out of the, the, the scene and now into a theater looking up at a screen with you okay. at that first point of safety on pause. Okay. Can you imagine that? You're in the theater? Yeah. Okay, uh, and so can you imagine the theater a bit like the feeling theater smell weird i don't know if you've ever noticed that but it's like can you imagine the smell of a theater yeah okay dark yeah kind of dark can you think about where you are in the theater yeah about how far from the screen mm -hmm. okay cool okay now there is a projector room up in the back of the room can you imagine that you now float out of your body and you're in the projector room yeah okay yeah, and so go ahead and look around. Your projector in your mind might look a little different than what I might think of as a projector, uh, but do you see the projecting the projecting machine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you see that little window that allows you to look down into the theater and see uh, Janessa down there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like. All right, and so um, and when you look around the projector room. Uh, notice how the smell is different than the theater. Can you notice that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, some people some people can imagine smell or hallucinate smell a lot easier than other people, but yeah. that's just what... like I imagine like the has like a computery smell, like a projector. I don't know. That O2, like yeah, like, like yeah. something more like technology o smell. Yeah, it's the ozone smell, like the technology. There's like there's like uh, plastics and ozone and you know, yeah. electrical things. Okay, 
Cool. And the, the part of the value of that is it kind of anchors you into these separate realities. As you do this, you're really parsing the current reality up. Mm -hmm. And that's really useful for how we're going to how we're going to do this, the structuring work of the rewind. OK, OK, so forget about all that intellectual talk. You are in the projector room. You can smell the smell of a projector room. You can see Janessa down there. And what I want you to notice as you look around the projector room is there is a switch that makes it go between black and white and, and color. Can you see that switch? Yeah. OK, um, go ahead and flip it to black and white so you can see that the screen on pause over there is flipped to black and white. Do you see that? Yeah. OK. Can so you notice that? OK. Well, it's like immediately it's like the picture went black and white. OK. OK, yeah, the picture just went black and white. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Um, and notice that there's also a, a, a switch that allows you to play it forward and play it backward. Do you see those? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's another switch in the room that allows you to add in crazy circus music. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So for now, we're not going to use all those switches at once. For now, what we're going to do is just do the black and white switch. You already got it on black and white? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to invite you to do now is uh, watch Janessa in the theater as you play it forward and then uh, notice her reaction to the black and white film. You're not focusing on the film, you're focusing on her. So go ahead and play it forward. Let me know when the scene is done. And you're at the second point of safety over there on the screen. OK, and so um, what we're going to do next is we are going to leave part of you in the projector room while you go down into the theater. Can you imagine yourself now in the theater looking at the screen? Yeah. Okay. Can you now go into the screen uh, on the second point of safety? Just sitting there in the black and white scene so that you're now the actress. You know that you're in the film and it's black and white. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So on the count of three, uh, the Janessa that's over in the projector room is going to flip the color on, start playing crazy circus music, and then have you go backwards very fast. Speed is important here. Fast backwards to the first point of safety, okay? You ready? Yeah, you feeling okay about this? Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two, three, rewind. Now when you're at the first point of safety. Okay. There. Okay, very good. Now we're going to break state. Open your eyes. Um, curious, did you ever have a favorite game or sport when you were kind of growing up? Yeah, like something, I don't know, I, I guess I'm like trying to think of a board game, but I thought of like the trampoline, I don't know if that counts. Trampoline? Trampoline's yeah. fine. Do you like the trampoline? Yeah, but there's like, I feel like there's a bunch, oh, because me and my friend would play some like, she would be like a janitor or something with like the hose on the trampoline. You have to like stay away from the hose, like run around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, oh yeah, that was one. Or like my brother would play like, he'd, like I don't know, play like roly poly or something. Like so, he would like roll around the tramp, and you try not to get like hit by him. Nice. He'd, like run around. <laughs> yeah. So very active trampoline work. <laughs> yeah. Good okay. But you like, was... smash you if you got hit by him, like roly over you. I don't know. Okay, so so some peril involved there. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so that was probably a good uh, break state. We're going to go back in now. Okay. OK, so when you think about the idea of being the actress at the first point of safety, we're not going forward. You're just imagining being the actress at the first point of safety. Yeah. Uh, would you say that your level of discomfort there is more the same or less? Mm. I know I can't remember. I think it's. Probably about the same. It feels about the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, because now it's like more, I think it moved actually. Like for some reason it was like more up here and now it's more in like my stomach. Like okay. when we went back, which is interesting. So 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 just instead of having the defensive like push back up here, you the more primal emotion in the stomach. Yeah. So deep breath in, slow breath out. Uh notice the shape of the feeling in the stomach. Good. OK, here we go. Breathe with that. You notice how it's moving uh, up the polyvagal ladder just a bit. We're, we're, we're not going to go forward with the scene. Send a message in the stomach saying we're not going to drive into the scene. We're not going to do this. 
I, I'm, we're just sitting here. Just so like kind of a reassurance. Good, OK. Good, notice how it kind of is moving up through. Good. <laughs> Breathe with it. Yeah. And the reason why we're doing this is because if we only do the, the sort of representation cognitive restructuring part um, with the that kind of bit, we often will be leaving too much to chance. So it's like here in this place where you know you're not moving forward, here in this place where you're just getting that mild, well, maybe not mild, but there's a somatic reaction that's like yeah. you know is just your body. Mm -hmm. um, we can move it up the polyvagal ladder a bit. And then maybe what we can do is um, let's go ahead and, and, and um, send a message inside down to the stomach saying, um, you're worried about something. We're going to rewind one more time. Are you OK with that? And first of all, see if that feels OK. Yeah. OK. okay. Good deal. So go ahead and imagine that Janessa up in the projector room uh, like does this little flip switch thing that puts you at the second point of safety. Can you imagine yourself at the second point of safety? Yeah. OK. Um, and on the count of three, she's going to have you in full color rewind very fast through the singing crazy circus music playing. You ready? Yeah. OK, one, two, three, rewind. Let me know when you're at the first point of safety. OK, good. Good. Deep breath. Did you ever have like a favorite um, place that you you would like to go with your friends to uh, let's let's say I don't know dance around and just have fun when you were growing up. Yeah. Okay. Like, and that could be a tainted question because there's always mixed feelings with I that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I think I know it's like there's a bunch, but like say like Salem Pond is what it's called. But oh that was a cool place. Okay. Yeah. Utah County, yeah. Okay, and so that, that's probably enough of a of a state break. So let's let's yeah. go ahead now and uh, go ahead and imagine yourself at the first point of safety. Okay. You are the actress. You're looking at the scene. Uh, what what do you notice in sight? Wait, I'm the actress. You're the actress in the in the scene, getting ready to play the play through the incident. Well, it, like just you're you are the actress. You're you're pretending to be her <laughs> right now. How's your uh, body doing? Okay. Uh yeah, it's like this is weird. It's like on my like my face, like that stuff moved to like my face. Okay. It's weird, but I don't know. Let's let's see if we can talk it up to the polyvagal ladder. Okay, like it's almost there. Yeah. Yeah. Deep breath in, slow breath out, send a message up into the face saying Oh, it, you're you're ready to expand and release some of this this fight or flight energy. Uh, let's let's just sometimes there are parts of us that don't want to release fight or flight energy because they're worried. Good, we got a yawn going. <laughs> Excellent, we want that. They don't want to release the fight or flight energy because they're super worried that they're going to give up their protective abilities or something okay. like I, oh I won't be able to protect you anymore and so uh let's go ahead and try this could be wrong but send a message inside the face saying um if you're worried that we're going to lose the protection of our fear uh oh don't worry we're not going to give up any of the fear we're just going to give up the fight or flight energy that's surrounding it and the fear is going to turn into its pure form focus mm -hmm. and problem solving yeah. and learning and said, see if there's a feeling of comfort with that. Yeah. Like, I guess a little bit. Like, it kind of moved. Like, so it was like more, like, felt like in my nose, and then now it's like my eyes. Okay. But yeah. So, I guess. Oh, this orbital area up here. So, that's a good place for it to be. So, send yeah. a message into the eyes, like in your mind, saying, saying, so you're right up here in my eyes. You're part of my whole body. And then show it the shape of you, the length of you, the breadth of your shoulders, and say, uh, can you help me like work with you on the fear by sending that fear into my whole body, into the whole shape of me? And see if it will. Go 
Good, good. Yeah, allow the raise in heart rate. Be curious about whether it's going to swell and release like it did before. Good, good. Good, yeah, because the waves would seem a lot more mild this time than last yeah. time. It's like, but they're coming, right? Like it's still, yeah, it's more like thought. And so it's but bursting out through thoughts. More, more like negative thoughts about myself more than like the experience. Like those fears have kind of gone, but it's more of like that, I guess that shame maybe is like where it's more strong. Yeah, much of our much of our learning is through like guilty and shameful feelings. You know, it's like that when it comes to the felt aspect of like how we solidify our learning growing up. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to integrating the guilt and the shame response, um, there's there's usually once you discharge the survival energy surrounding it, there's this prize. Sometimes the prize is just the feeling of freedom, trust in yourself to just not make choices that don't suit you. Yeah. Other times, um, the prize is more like a very clear, deeply felt understanding of where you don't want to go in life. And so and that really helps frame where you do want to go, which is a good thing. And so, I mean, regardless of what whether either of those apply, it may be worth uh, working with that sort of like those those guilty thoughts or those like bad thoughts about self, negative thoughts about self and send a message saying it's like, Oh, we really don't want to become or just stay in a state that's that's not helpful, not good. Yeah. We want to be a better person, and just send that 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 kind of affirmation inside and see what kind of feeling response you get. Like if you send it into the eyes. Feels feels a little better. Thank goodness Janessa knows that we really want to do better. Yeah, and so um, now that there's a little more trust and alignment, it may be worth saying, you know, the worry about being a, a bad person or an incompetent person or whatever, you know, um, uh, that worry is something that you shouldn't have to bear alone. I'm so happy to join you in it so that you and me can keep working together with the decisions I got to make. And so just say, send, send the worry into my body. There, if there's any worry left, don't worry, you're not giving anything up. Just send it into my body and I'm going to join you in it. I mean, incidentally, you will give up the fight or flight energy, but you will not give up the learning. If anything, it'll, it'll deal the learning in. Like you can have the exercise intelligence without the, the flippant ulcer that you otherwise would have had over it. Good, let it emerge. It kind of seems to be emerging slowly. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so just just keep breathing with it and saying, that's right, that's right. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna be competent, strong, smart people here. You wanna send this? <laughs> you can even point out it's like, hey, I'm I'm your face identity. But, you know, I'm gonna have to make all these decisions. I need your fear to touch me. Fear of doing it wrong. I need it to touch me. I need it to move through me. See the shape of my body. Good. Okay, the new feeling is emerging, it seems. And tell it tell that part of you, don't fight the yeah. new feeling. It doesn't matter if it's if it's shame or if it's humiliation or if it's sadness. It's like all of it, all of it's valuable. Yeah, well, it seems like this is like interesting. Maybe I did like a resource thing myself, but I like immediately like jumped to like a song and then like it went away. But I was like, OK, I, like didn't focus on it anymore. So the pendulation yeah. process, I mean, yeah. so, you know, sometimes Levine used the word pendulation where you purposely touch into a feeling touch out. He also would use it for when our system would do it for us. And so yeah. it immediately said, I'm going to take you out of this to something positive. It's like, cool, that's fine. You know, yeah. it's great. Now, in your more resourced state, let's let's go on back. And and it's it's kind of like when your dance partner twirls you out, and you say, "Cool, I'm going to come back in for another twirling out." You know, so so we'll come on back in. Um, recognizing that the thing that sort of pushed you into that song with this other idea, 
uh, was was as valuable as this other feeling that you're coming back to. Mm -hmm. So so go ahead and send a message saying it's like, yeah, I felt a different feeling for a moment. That was nice. Let's go back to to that to whatever's left. Is there a more negative feeling coming up? If it's too much for us, you can let me know. But I'm going to tell you, I feel a lot of negative things and can handle it. So send it to my body. And see if this part trusts you enough to send it. Mm. Yeah, and so welcome the intensity, say that's right, yeah. I'm definitely going to have to rely on your reaction because my I, I was kicked out on that one. I'm not able to feel with you right now, so I'm just watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fine. It's totally if it kicks, it's fine if it kicks me out. Like this, yeah. if this is just yours and it needs to be something you go inside and experience, that's totally fine. Yeah. It's still kind of like. I'm like trying to understand this, like what if like the stuff that's distressing is like around like the what if. What if that did happen? Like, I guess, like, I was safe, but like, what if I did get hit by this car or something? Yeah, that 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 indomitable need or compulsion to figure out what to do if the worst case scenario happened. An important yeah. survival uh, strategy that your system has learned to do probably over generations, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through, you know, what, whatever made you you. And so if anything, uh, that speaks to how you and your former generations have survived. Okay. Yeah. So let's acknowledge that there's a that's like, oh, we need to know uh, what we would do in the worst case scenario. Thank you for wondering about that. Go ahead and send that message yeah. in and see if that, at least the validation opens up some energy flow. Mm -hmm. So it keeps coming back. I didn't know this would be linked to that, but a lot of like, I'm going to get in trouble, kind of like if I got hurt or something, then like I would get in trouble. Oh my sure. God, interesting. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fully yeah. rational, does it? Yeah, but I think there's like that fear, like, yeah. Right. And so, and consider the implications. Um, if we're in trouble, uh we're we're a burden if we're a burden we're not likable if we're not likable uh then then who's going to attach to us if no one attaches to us what does that mean well for a, for a, a small child it means death yeah and so um not sure if that's as far as this part is going to go mm -hmm. you know uh but let's go ahead and send a validation to the feeling of um we're we're worried about getting in trouble. Thank you. Send that worry into my body so that you're not alone. Because we're getting to the deeper layer of the same thing. Yes, yes, here we go. Now, is it going all the way up the ladder to that release state a little more quickly or not so much? Yeah, it's like moving a little straight. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was having a mirror response on yeah. that because I was kicked out earlier. So I was like, am I or not? Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah well, it's like goes back up to like the face kind of feeling. Like, okay. Yeah. Move the jaw if the jaw gets tight because the it's near near the top end of the vagus nerve and we have some control over the jaw. You just open and close it a bit to help and stay present with the release process. And uh, let me know when the activity seems to either uh, slow down or get stuck. Like, got stuck. It was more just like, this is the answer. Like, this is the core to all your problems. This thing right here. Like, okay. <laughs> like, that's weird, but that makes sense. 
like this fear of like getting in trouble like it's like this i think this is like goes with the work stuff too like this goes with everything right and so when it comes to also like moving forward in life and not buckling under the weight of your own success when you're really winning mm -hmm. so you don't just like pull back and drop things that would have actually been working for you would have served you you know mm -hmm. it's like this is the same the same skill you're using for this anxious thing that's coming up like we we just decoupled that event somewhat from from the survival energy right yeah. and the, and the other issues you know uh, by this sort of representation restructuring with the rewind mm -hmm. um it's probably not perfectly disconnected but it's disconnected enough that now you're getting to the attachment stuff that made it so distressing and so easy so something that would easily come back up in your head right yeah so there's a part of you stuck in yesterday and so um now what we're doing we're, de we're dealing with the attachment issues we're dealing with the uh, authority issues we're dealing with uh, the um, you know the, the the fight or flight of, about what if i don't get my attachment needs met what if i'm not attachable what if i'm not good mm -hmm. you know or if i or if somebody sees how how not good i am you know yeah yeah and so that fear of scrutiny and so um, when it comes to feelings that are really uh, fearful or shameful or awkward, they are so utterly full of just life force and power. And so uh, if you're willing to irreverently uh, invite those feelings to come to the surface and, and you know that you're not going to re-traumatize yourself by doing so, mm -hmm. uh, let things tremble, let the tears start to emerge, let the sweat start to come out or whatever, you know, yeah. because that's when you're going to feel richly and fully alive, if that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't I don't know if you're willing to go there today, but are you willing to take to, to have a little more conversation on the inside with this? Yeah. OK, deep breath in, slow breath out, just pump the bellows of the nervous system, send a message. Um, OK, so so there's still some more worry in there and that worry is valid. It's important for us to attach to people. It's important for us to be worthy. So you'll give a little validation first and see how that feels before we proceed. Yeah, I mean, as long as she knows that you are like aligned with this deep desire, it's like, okay, I can trust Janessa. We can go a little further into this. And uh, you can ask her, it's like, is there is there something that feels like it's bad or wrong inside of us? Is there? Yeah, and so maybe let's see if she believes you. Send the message, another deep breath. I'm not afraid of that part of me that feels bad. I'm willing to actually meet that part without you having to worry about it anymore. Is that okay? And see if she's okay with it or not. Yeah, and so let her know it's like, if you're worried about me not being able to handle it, let just so you know, I've got another person with me that's going to be my listener. He's going to be my witness. He he listens with his body so that then if there's too much for us at the moment that somebody else is feeling it with us. There's plenty of room in him too to handle this. And so ask her, is that okay? If you if in a moment I'm going to take another brief deep breath and ask you to send that badness, that that yucky feeling into my body. See if she's okay with that. She's okay. All right. So start breathing in deep, breathing out slow and inviting it. You're going to open your pain receptors and I'm going to open mine. Just wait. Good. Good, good. That's right. Good. It's exactly the way it's supposed to happen. Yeah, this deserves witness. And this part of you may not know this. But the feeling is finite. The thing behind it that's positive is way bigger. So it's your job to consciously believe that. 
so that she is able to keep sending the negative feelings. Good, good. You'll notice the vast majority of the feeling is, is simply the fight or flight arousal, right? But the actual like emotions and, and maybe some of the physical pains or whatever else is in there is much smaller. The fight or flight arousal is the most important thing for us to discharge and be with and finish. The other parts integrate, turn into memory and understanding and intelligence. Mixed emotional states that are empowering. I'm like, yeah, I feel like part of me is like checking out. I'm like, is that that's like good checking out? Yeah, it could be, uh, and it's also it's it could like, be that I'm I'm yammering so much. It's like yeah. I'm pulling your intellect out into this. But I'm like, yeah, like it feels like I'm like falling asleep slowly, but but it's like different too, like very observing. Still. So so the dissociative state, dorsal vagal heartbreak goes okay. on. You know, that's what, yeah, it's like, yeah. This feels like dissociation. Yes, how most people talk about like clients that seem more negative. I was like, this actually is like pretty nice. No, and you've noticed yeah. it in the MDR. How often in the MDR do people dissociate? They do very often. Yeah, sometimes they feel like they go into this dipped out dreamlike state and then you're then you pull them back and then they go back in. You know, it's like I mean, they, yeah. yeah, totally. It's like, yeah, it's the dissociative process is part of it. A lot of times people don't recognize it as what it is. Well, it was like, because first, like, the part came up, I was like, I know this very, this part very well. And then, like, the more, like, dissociated part came up. And so yeah. it's like, that part that I'm like, I know you so well, this other part always comes up later with it, I think. Yeah. Interesting. And so let's, <laughs> let's finish the dissociative feeling, yeah. too. So welcome it. Yeah, you finish the dissociative thing because then once it's like oh well that's finished the next feeling starts coming in i was wondering what that was that was emerging it was dissociation okay, oh, okay. <laughs> it was i guess good but yeah and so it'll be a more empowered state to have the dissociative state now like present so that you can disidentify from it i mean when people do the ketamine work they'll be they'll they'll dissociate and uh and then have these really intense and emotional reactions but they're they, separated from them so that they're not so utterly overwhelming and they have the long-term change so yeah the dissociative state is valuable okay good okay now the next one, whether it's, uh, I, I would suspect it's it's either going to be positive or negative. It kind of feels like it could either be peace or rest or something else. What is that? It's probably a mix of, like, so there's, like, the stomach anxiety still, but then, like, up here is more of that peace, mm. like, the dissociation almost. I guess it's more of, like, observing the anxiety able to observe the anxiety like it's there yeah but i'm not getting involved in it i guess yeah yeah like if that makes sense You're I'm disidentified. Like, okay. yeah 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 i mean the buddhists usually say disidentify the ericksonian hypnotist would say you're dissociated from it you know it's unblended. like useful dissociation yeah. yeah and so unblended for the ifs crew yeah yeah say, unblending yeah, that's a great way of putting it. All of them are useful terms yeah. with their nuances. So, um, it, yeah, be breathing and noticing um, that there's part of you up, up top that's more disidentified, disconnected, unblended. There's a part of you down below uh, that's still uh, experiencing the turmoil of yesteryear. And uh, I wonder if one of those parts is willing to welcome the other part close to it. One of those parts is willing to uh, uh, invite the other one in. Yeah. OK, now notice what happens as they start to meet. The exchange of energy and information is important. Good. 
good, good. Okay, yeah. Notice the involuntary contractions and the Thank things you. inside. Yeah, that's welcoming. Uh, that's a welcome thing. Let's welcome it. Yeah, be welcoming. Your job is to be the conscious bridge between these parts, telling them that it's right that you're having these sort of uh, internal fireworks. Like it's still separated, but mm -hmm. yeah. And and honestly, for if if it's not all supposed to happen in a single, you know, day, that's okay. Oh, like it's good. I feel like I'm like ah, I feel bad. Well, I'm like this wasn't supposed to happen, but it's like it wasn't supposed to happen, right? Yeah, we're like oh dang, we went down this road. Yeah, and I was like I wasn't that. expecting that, but I was like this is where I need to go, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and so it might be worth acknowledging the truth of it that it's like w we know what we're not going to do in the future. Yeah, because right now it's more of so it's like this adult part and then the younger part. This part's very much like, well, I'm going to get in trouble, and. It's not letting that go. And the adult part's more like, you know, it's okay to get in trouble. It doesn't mean that that's like that you're bad or like you're not good if like you got in trouble. Like doesn't mean like that like affects your worth. It's just like you did something. But that child part has like a hard time separating that. Like, no. Well, so so the, yeah. the reason why is because the child part's needs are are not based on rationality while well, the adult part totally gets it, right? Yeah. And so it might be worth asking the adult part. Um, well, the child part probably needs to feel the rich acceptance of someone who knows what you know. And just ask the adult part, how will you show the child part that you deeply and wholly accept her? Ultimately, there has to be an exchange of energy and information. When the adult is willing to absorb and discharge the fear that the child can't absorb and discharge, that's what leads to the deep comfort. Maybe at this point, you might need to model something for the adult part of yourself. Yeah. And say, ask the adult part, since the adult part is the, the manager for the child part, you can ask the adult part, can you let me uh, interact directly with the child and see if the adult's okay with that? Yeah. Okay. And so ask the adult part, please stay with me and watch. And then just go ahead and turn to the child now. And and uh, how if if you were able to fully bring the child's fear into your body, uh, how might you interact with the child while you're bringing that fear into your body? Some people might hold the child. Other people might kind of imagine more of this ethereal energetic type process or a, a play, you know, type situation, back and forth interaction. Yeah, we know this happened, like we get this, but I think the kid, it's like a lot bigger or the adult is like, ah, like it's more of like, okay, I can like kind of let that pass, but yeah. Oh, but for her, it's like it's held deeply. Yeah. 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 And and curious, does she feel difficulty sending her her worries and her fears into your current adult body? Or does your current adult body have difficulty receiving them? I think it's more of like, I don't know what to do with that. Because the kid's more like, here's this, and then the adult's like, 
kind of like you're carrying all this stuff, but you're like, where do we, what do we do with it? Like I have it, but I don't know where to put it. Well, let's go ahead and imagine that it's, it, it kind of liquefies and goes into your skin. Okay. How about we'll try that? We'll just do a little imagery with yeah. that. See if that works. See if you get, it starts going up the polyvagal ladder. Remember, if it if it trembles, wobbles, cries, or heats, it's it just means that you're winning, going up the ladder. If you get involuntary contractions in different parts of your body, welcome them. Let them contract and pull. Keep pushing to get the air you need for a deep breath, even if your uh, lungs are smooshing in on you. A lot of times, um, it's not our natural inclination to uh, open our sensitivity to pain. We've done a lot of work to desensitize ourselves. Uh, th this is where it becomes critical to do the opposite of what your pre previous inclination was. To enjoy the power of vulnerability, as some people would put it. <sighs> Noticing as you let the feelings through that there's they really, really don't hurt you ultimately. They just are a bit of aversion at first, and then you feel something strong and powerful inside yourself. Because really, I mean, Janessa, you know, everybody everybody has a part inside of them that accepts and forgives all the other parts. Yeah, well, there's like this. Here. Like, because I started to think, because it was like the kid, but then I started like picture my bunny. I don't know why. I was like whole, hugging her. I was like, imagine my bunny like thought she did something wrong. And I just like think that's so sad in my head. Like, I like feel sadness for that kid almost too. But like, it's like this innocent thing that it's just like, oh, they feel so bad for like doing something wrong. I'm like, oh, that's sad. Yeah. yeah. And so, so. Take a moment to believe in the resiliency yeah. and the growth potential of the of the kid or the bunny. You know, yeah. it's like like if I stay with you and let you feel this, you will start to feel your strength. Yeah, you know, it's like the whole attitude. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's sometimes hard to do as a parent too. You mm -hmm. know, see my kid the other day, he was really upset about something. Yeah. And to sit there and just be with him in that and not flinch and believe in him that it's like that his own power and resilience would emerge in, in due course. It was beautiful to watch it happen. And I actually had to really <laughs> essentially exercise faith in the reality that this kid was a whole being born to grow and thrive. And so yeah. then to see the smile back on his face and to see him all happy again, you know, <laughs> and like, it's like, yeah, I know I can't do that thing right now, but I'm happy now. You know, I'm so yeah. sad and angry and then That's oh, nice. I'm OK. Yeah. And it wasn't just like I suppressed the feeling. It was more like I wept and I abreacted and I felt until until something mixed with my feeling and I could feel this wholeness, you know, that was better than where I was. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why I just keep crying now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's you do the lacrimal release as part of the finishing Stuff, process. Yeah, yeah. finishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and of course, I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day. Neuroplasticity it takes a little time, but you have to have bursts where it goes fast enough and strong enough uh, that it kicks off, kicks a process into motion that's going to keep moving afterwards. Yeah. You know, I mean, really. You have an intense enough connection on the inside. It gives this sort of indomitable command to the nervous system saying, I need more resiliency. I need more connections. I need more uh, ability to 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 enjoy emotional complexity, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm still like, I guess I'm like still processing this. I like, can't, huh? but yeah. Yeah, and so maybe worth just by way of non-abandonment to send a message inside, just tapping this off, saying, "Hey, we're going to keep working on this, even if we're not thinking about it." Is that okay, guys? 